Good evening. It's such an honour to be invited to speak to you tonight alongside such incredible speakers. And I just want to say that I know the calibre and intellect of our speakers tonight shall be second to none. Now, I'm sure most of you need no convincing of the merits of an independent Scotland. And we may have already discussed tonight by which means that this can happen. But what I would like to talk to you tonight, while I have your undivided attention, is fear. Now, you may think this has gone off topic, but please bear with me. Um, why is being aware of fear so pertinent to our goal of an independent country? And what can we do to counter that? We're at a point in this journey when we're polling around the 50% mark, just below and just above. And some of us don't, don't really need convincing, and some will never be convinced. We can get a referendum, but what are we doing right now to ensure that we win it? And how do we convince the undecideds, the floating voters, and the newly come of age voters of the merits of an independent Scotland? What is it that may persuade and prevent those people from voting yes? And I'll tell you a huge contributing factor to this is fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of change, and fear of economic instability. Fear of so many of the semantics of the arguments that we've gotten into since 2014. Now we can get answers to these questions for people, but if those answers that we give them are not coupled with an active effort to alleviate fear, then the message that we're going to try and convey will not have a lasting impact. Fear is a powerful channel used by many to control and subdue if we remember Project Fear. I think it's still ongoing, isn't it? So if you've ever been on social media, I'm jealous if you've never been, <laughs> you could probably see the symptoms of fear. And it often looks like aggression, defensiveness, or dismissiveness. Now look out for those symptoms, and most importantly, you know, we shouldn't feed it. We shouldn't reflect that behavior because when we do, we confirm their bias and we are discredited. We must try to diminish the fear by being examples of wisdom, being kind, and let's be these good role models for our movement. And believe me, you don't have to tell me how hard it is not to see the red mist and just go for it all out. Um, I've deleted many responses on social media. But what I think is really important is when somebody is in disagreement with us, but you feel, you know, they maybe need to get their message out, they could be angry at our message. Remember that that's a symptom of fear. Take a deep breath and be prepared for them to dump their fears on you. Let them finish, hear them out. And when they're done, thank them for their opinion. We cannot deny another person's opinion and we must be listeners. By listening, we not only help them maybe feel better about getting their words out, but we might also learn and understand more of what worries them. And then we can take that away and work on solutions for it. So it not only helps the discourse that we have for them, but it also helps our intelligence gathering. So reaction needs to be avoided and being responsive is what we need to be working on. Now, how does this get us independence? How do we get that 45% we had up and over to say a nice 60, 65%? And I would say that's vision. Now, this is something that fear robs of people. We need to create that vision of independence. What, is, what kind of society will an independent Scotland be? Now, I do love the saying that it can be anything we want it to be. And I know many of us here have probably used those words. And for me, possibilities are wonderful. But for many others who are undecided, that's not concrete enough for them. And they need to see tangible security and certainties. So what can we do to turn that vision into our 4D world? Well, for that, 
we need to show how we work as a country right now. People are watching how we deal with our economics. What do we prioritise? What are we doing for health, for education, infrastructure? People are always watching. So when I do hear people saying, stop working on this or stop working on that and concentrate on independence, I say this is exactly what this work is for. We can already look, you know, since 2014, the massive difference in how Scotland and England operate, how we put our people first and we lead with fairness and compassion. We invest in future-proofing our industries and supporting our poor and our marginalised in our society. We are giving power to women to level the playing field so that we can utilise all of our citizens' talents. A Scotland where everyone is welcome and nobody is left behind. These are tangible things that will convince others of the merits of an independent Scotland. How we govern now will not only prepare us, but it will convince others. And if we look at our young people, 70%, I think it's around, are in favour of Indy. What are we doing to ensure they stay in favour? Because when questioned, they often answer they're in favour because they see a more progressive country ahead of the rest of the UK. We are shaping a country they want for them and future generations. If we deny them that and offer the same as it's always been or the right wing rhetoric similar to the, to the Westminster Tories, we are going to lose them and their votes. I have an autistic son and before we would visit anywhere new to get him used to an idea, I would let him have a taster of it before he got there. So if we were going to the beach, I'd maybe let him listen to some sounds of it on my phone or give him some sand to touch and play with so he wasn't overwhelmed with a huge beach of sand. Because he wasn't just fearful, he was terrified. Now that helped him, that helped him be comforted when he did arrive at that new place. Introducing an idea in a responsive way is the best way to present what some perceive as a radical idea because it's not so radical if they've already started to experience it. Now, I thank you for listening to me tonight and I want to leave you with the words of a modern day Scots poet <laughs> who's Jerry Cinnamon. <laughs> I don't know if there's any fans of Jerry tonight. I'm certainly a fan. And Jerry, he, he made this remarkable song um, around about the time of the 2014 referendum. And he said, hope over fear, don't be afraid. Tell Westminster Tories that Scotland's no longer your slave. Carpe diem, will you seize the day? Unchain the unicorn, show them that Scotland is brave. Good night and enjoy the rest of your evening. Mwah.